Hey guys, welcome to the 3D Animation Hub. My name is Brian and today we're going to be learning how to make a turntable in Blender. So I've already made this video in Maya and um, how we did it there is we showed two different ways of making it. One where you have the camera rotating around the character and one where the character rotates and the camera stays stationary. We're going to do the same thing here. So if you're ready and you've already smashed the like button, let's hop in. All right, so this first method we're gonna cover is where the camera rotates around the character. First thing you wanna do is press Shift C, and what that does is it centers the 3D cursor, so everything else you import at this point will be imported in the center of the scene. Another thing I'm going to do actually is bring this collection down just so it's ground level. It'll just make things uh, easier for some of the later processes. So let's see, let's bring this up a little bit more. All right, that should be good. All right, now that we have our 3D cursor in our center, whatever else we make is gonna come out in the center. So next we're gonna press Shift A. And what we want to do is we would want to create a curve and a circle curve to be exact. So let's make this bigger. This is gonna be the path for the camera to follow. So, you know, make it as, as big as you need it to be. I, you know what, maybe even a little bit bigger. There we go. So I think that's okay for me. Next up, we're going to create a, again, shift A. We're going to create an empty. So we gotta come down all the way to empty. This can be anything. Uh, what we're doing here is we're gonna create a target for the camera to look at. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a circle here, make it a little bit bigger so it's targetable, uh, so I can click on it. Next up, let's find the camera. The camera's over here. So I'm gonna make sure the camera is as close uh, as possible to where the path would start, which would be around here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to top view. Make sure we center this. Don't worry about the direction yet. We're just trying to center the camera as best as we can to where the motion path starts. So let's go to front view, where are we? Front view and bring it all the way down. Yeah, all right, that looks centered enough. So next step is we're going to select the camera, select the curve, and we're going to right click, go to parent, and go all the way down to follow path. And now when you move the timeline, you see that the camera moves around the curve and then it stops at frame 100. We'll address that a little bit later, but uh, so that's what we want, but now the unfortunate thing is the camera is pointing away from the character. So next step is, let's go back to frame one, make sure you unselect everything, select just the camera, uh, come here in the constraint tab, add constraint, and we're going to select track two. And here we can click the eyedrop and select the empty. So what we're saying here is that we want the camera to be tracking that empty we made earlier, the circular empty. So for example, if we move this up and down, the camera turns up and down because it's facing the empty. So we're gonna bring the empty right in the center of the character and let's see how this looks. Apparently I have another key here on 150. We're gonna delete that and now we should be good. If your camera starts acting funky, just uh, mess around with these settings. For me, this setting works. The tracking axis, axis on um, negative Z and the up axis on Y. This works for me. Uh, this actually came default for me, I think. I don't think I messed around with it, but you know, if yours is different, like if you make this Z positive, it'll be facing the opposite way. So um, yeah, try these settings if it works for you. If not, just mess around until you get something that works for you. So next up, here I actually want the camera to be at a higher level, so I'm gonna bring this up. And I'm going to bring the target down actually because I wanna get the whole character in there. And I wonder if I can scale the curve now. Let's try scaling it. Does the animation still work? Yeah, there you go, it works, cool. Um, so now the other thing to tackle is, this is going a little bit fast for my taste this turntable, I want this to be at least twice slower. So how we do this is by selecting the curve, coming to the data properties object. Is that what it's called? Data, oh no, sorry, object data properties. 
and this is the source of your problem the the path animation so this is set to 100 and let's change this to 200 let's say because that's how long we want the cycle to last the turntable to last and i'm going to come down here and change the ending of my timeline to 200. all right let's see how this looks yeah this is looking a lot better i like this a lot more so that's method one uh, next up, I'm going to show you guys method two, which is we're going to have the character be rotating and we're going to have the camera stationary. This is, again, if you have lights and you want the lighting to stay the same on your character uh, or, or that you want the lighting to stay the same and then the character rotate around the same lighting, this, this is the way you would do it. Otherwise, the camera is going to rotate around and um, the lighting on the character is going to change depending on where the camera is. All right, let's go ahead and hop into our other scenes. All right, method two is a little bit faster and it's pretty similar. So again, make sure you press Shift C to center the cursor in the center. Make sure your object is in the center. Next, we're going to press Shift A. Uh, again, we're going to create an empty. So empty, let's make this a, it could be a cube. Scale this up, oops, scale this up. And I'm going to bring this up to where the center of the character is. It doesn't really matter too much, but uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to click the collection, which is our object here. Then I'm going to shift select our new empty, the cube. Then I'm going to press control P and I'm going to parent to object and then keep transform. And now when we move the empty, our object moves with it. So we can move it, rotate it, uh, scale it, and this empty controls our object now. So next up, we're going to set up the camera. So I'm gonna come here and, okay, let's say we want the camera view to be something like this. And now by pressing Control, Alt, and then zero on the number pad, the camera moves to the position that we're looking at. So this is still too close. So I'm just going to grab the camera here and bring it back and bring it up and rotate it down a little bit. There you go, that looks good to me. Okay, so again, we want this to be 200 frames. So I'm, I'm going to drag this empty all the way to frame 200. And let's bring this up. And which rotation is this? This is rotation Z. So for rotation Z, we're gonna press 360. Nothing changed because it's it's the same pose, but when we scrub here, we see that our character is actually rotating. Now, two things you will notice. Let's make our timeline 200, just to show the example. Two things you guys will notice is that uh, the rotation starts in a slow, speeds up, and then slows down again. And another thing you'll notice is that frame one and frame 200 are the exact same frame. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is make our timeline 199. So we don't see that very last frame because otherwise your turntable wouldn't loop correctly. It would get stuck because there'll be two of the same frames. Next thing we're going to do is go to our graph editor. And if you don't know how to get to the graph editor, make a new tab and then uh, click the bottom left box and change it to the graph editor. So we're gonna to come to our rotation Z. I'm gonna focus on this and click drag everything. Press T and make this into linear. So we don't have that slowing in, that easing in and easing out anymore. So now when we look at this, it should be at a steady speed and it shouldn't be slowing down. And on top of that, it should loop seamlessly. Perfect. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you learned something, make sure to smash that like button, hit the sub button, stay notified of future animation related videos. Uh, I want to give a special thank you to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your continuous, continuous support. And with all of that out of the way, happy animating and I will see you guys in the next video.